4 trying to go do a sneaky move on us. Yeah, no problem with this gun. Nice damage on that thing. I think it's only got like 450 hit points, so it's gone. You know, the low is up there as predicted, pretty much, and he's going to get... Hey guys, welcome back to DG.net. This is Nether Void, also known as John, doing another World of Tanks strategy series for you today. Uh, this is probably going to be the last of the double headers, and that's because I've cleared out all my uh, all the lower tiers out of my garage, and um, I'm getting ready to be, go back to uh, some normal normal weeks. Well, I might have one more because I do have this PZ4 I need to get rid of, so there might be another uh, double header next week. But anyway, this is the three three uh, the VK3002 douchebag. I mean DB. And this is a tier 7 a German medium tank. And this is really not a great tier 7 tank. And a lot of that's because this is a this is the gun that's on all the tier 6 tanks. Um, and this is its top gun, this uh, short 88 here. And that is because the VK3002 was developed alongside the 3001 series pretty much. And so you've got that, ser that era of tank up with the tier 7s, which doesn't make any sense. But if you look at the tech tree, the, the 3002 sits right here. I guess they could have put it over here. That's probably what I would have done, like split the 3001 off to here. Well, it got all discombobulated, but all three of these tanks were generally produced at the, uh, designed at the same time, all these VKs. And so to have this one as a tier 7 really sucks. They should have just put it right here. Anyway, now you know exactly what sucks about this tank. Basically, the way you're going to play this tank, it is pretty speedy, it's pretty quick, um, it gets decent bounces for medium and uh, you're going to use this thing to flank and get behind people and shoot them uh, in the butt and in the sides with this uh, short 88. Pretty much the same play way you played the 3001H and P. But this is kind of in between those two. It's not as fast as a 3001H, not as much acceleration, but it has more ar a little bit more armor like a 3001P. So anyway, that's how you play it. Let's go over some stats. 1250 hit points. You know, that's okay. It's not that great. Let's see what the Panther has here. It's probably about the same. Yeah, it's got a little bit less than the Panther, which again, that's really, man, another thing that it doesn't have. Um, 750 engine horsepower pushing 42 tons. That's where you almost get the good acceleration and, and, and stuff. For Germans, it's pretty good, uh, but it's still a little bit lacking in that department. 56 speed limit, probably only get into the high 30s or something like that, maybe 30-something, maybe the 40s. Uh, I'm not really positive. You're going to have to check out the video. 40 traverse speed on the track is pretty good. That's pretty good um, for circling. You could do with that a little bit. It's not really tight. It's not like a... Let's, well, let's see what the T44 does because that thing has great turning. Oh, 51. Yeah, so it's going to be... You can get behind people, but you probably won't be able to circle them that well. Uh, 80 sloped front armor, just like a lot of other German tanks, effectively making it about 120 uh, millimeters of armor, but it's not great. Again, it's, it's okay. 120 on the turret front is like a lot of other tanks. Like even the PZ-4 has that. This is the PZ-4's armor, actually, which is, again, you're a tier 7, so uh, I'm not really sure what they're thinking there. Um, 30 turret to verse speed, pretty standard for giving you 70. That will help you flank people and help you maybe take some circling shots before you get behind cover. And uh, 367 view range, not the greatest, but, you know, not too bad. What you're going to do anyway is wait for people to light stuff up. You're definitely not going to be leading the charge, unless you're top tier, then you will. Uh, 710 meter radio, pretty decent, uh, pretty standard meter, uh, FUG-12 radio there. It's nice. It's going to help you all through the game. You're going to be able to have radio contact with pretty much everybody. So that's stats. Let's get right into modules here. Um... You should have all these radios unlocked from 3001H or whatever way you came up. So throw the FUG-12 on there right away with the 710 meter radio range. If you don't, um, you're going to be stuck with these. Well, the 415 is okay, and you can get by with this other one, but just unlock the FUG-12 on the uh, previous tank. Now, the tracks are a decent upgrade with uh, plus 4 degrees per second traverse, uh, but what you really need them for is you can't throw any th you can't throw the new turret or the, or the biggest gun on here without these tracks. So... That's really what you get out of them. Uh, the engine, you should have both of these engines. Well, we'll talk about that later, but 650 horsepower is not too bad. Actually, when it's stock, it's not slow, um, but it's not really fast either. So getting that extra 100 horsepower really helps out a lot, especially since you're going to be flanking with this thing. You're never going to be hit almost. You're really not going to be able to hit anybody in the front pretty much with this uh, This gun. It's pretty bad. Um, the the upgraded turret is really, is really nice with the extra 40 armor. I mean, this is the standard... Um, Panther turret and 
uh, turret you've been using all the way up the line pretty much. That's the one thing I don't like about it. I really wish they would have upgraded the turret in the process because to have the same turret you had on the tier 5 on the tier 7 just doesn't make a lot of sense. When you have this stock tier, everybody's going to pen penetrate you right through the turret. Uh, it's pretty bad actually. And uh, also you do need the upgraded turret to get the biggest gun. Now you can get the smaller gun with the standard turret. Uh, and that's the the L70 here, you've probably seen this on lots of other tanks. The Stug has this gun. Uh, so again, using a tier 5 gun on a tier 7 tank, not the smartest thing I've ever seen. Um, but it's decent. But yeah, you're going to really want this uh, this uh, short 88 here. It's going to pack a little bit bigger of a punch, especially since, since I think the way you should play this tank is not to circle a guy, but drive behind him, shoot him once or twice, and then get behind cover. And that means you're not going to get as many shots on the enemy as you might if you just could circle him until he's dead. So that's all the modules. Let's talk about some weak points. Um, I didn't find a lot of information on weak points for this tank, but I can generally tell you what they are um, just from what I know. Lower glasses, machine gun turret, driver hatch, and pre or viewports. I'm pretty sure that's the driver viewport because I think it's just missed in a slit there. Let's look at the uh, Panther. So let's look at the Panther. Hmm. Well, the driver slits up here, driver viewport. I'm pretty sure that's the driver viewport. So, uh, other than that, you've got the cupola, you've got these two range finders here on the turret. Uh, this is 120 millimeters of armor here, flat, so, well, it's almost flat. You might be able to hit it there, but mm, I kind of doubt it. Just cupola is easy for these German tanks. I'd shoot it there. Um, obviously, on the side, anywhere on the side or back, you're going to be able to jack it up in that, in that uh, hatch there. And there's a hatch here. All this stuff's going to be easy to pin, so you don't need to worry about it. So now that we've talked about weak points, let's do some research. Here's the DB's research tree, and you can tell off the bat you're going to have at least the FOG-7 unlocked. Obviously, also the FOG-12 if you do my strategy where unlock everything previous. Uh, and so you will also have... I th no, you will not have the engine. So you'll have all the guns. So you'll have the guns, the two radios, and that's it. So what you're going to do, because you can't put... Well, you could put the engine on first, but it's 17,000, so I would not go for that first. What you're going to do, though, since you need to get the turret to unlock the gun, which you already have unlocked, is you're going to get the um, tracks first. That's going to help you with mobility and get behind people and stuff right away, but it's also going to allow you to put the turret on once you unlock it and then throw the 80, short 88 on immediately after that. So that's pretty much what I do. Tracks, turret and then you're going to have that gun, and then the engine, and you're all done, and just do the tank of choice, which hopefully you've had these two unlocked, but, you know, either one you want. So it's going to be over here on the side, and that's it for research. Pretty simple on this tank. So equipment, I actually do have equipment on this tank. Um, I would definitely put vent rammer. That's pretty standard. And then I think for the third one, I would probably go laying drive, and that's because you're going to be moving around a lot, and this does not have access to the vert stab, so the laying drive is the best thing you're going to get for aiming. Um, you might be able to put, might want to put coated optics on it if you are planning on kind of leading a push and stuff because that'll get your view range up even while you're on the move and help you spot in vehicles as you're moving in. Um, that's pretty much all I would get. I wouldn't get any of these other things. That's pretty much what I get. So, um, as far as ammo, I probably would get 48 and 12 HE because you're not going to be able to pen people and if you cannot flank, there's some maps where you're not going to be able to flank, you're just going to have to shoot HE and try to take out the guy's gun or whatever you can do to them from the front. So that's probably what I'd do with ammo. Uh, consumables, full rack of consumables here, because this is a tier 7, uh, so that's pretty standard. Crew, you're going to have a 90% crew when you get into this tank, and you'll be up to 100 by the time you unlock all the stuff you need to unlock. Um, I'm not really sure mine's only at 90%. I think I had to buy a new crew for this tank, because I split the crew off to another tank. Oh yeah, th this crew, my other crew went to my Tiger tank, so this is a new crew. So your crew will look like this when you first get it, and then it'll be 100% before too long. Um, when you kind of unlock everything and get everything opened up, you'll have 100% crew. And you'll be able to tell the difference. It can be really nice. So that's pretty much everything. Let's get in this in, uh, tank into a couple games. So got a game here on El Haloof. And uh, I get a lot of good gameplay on this map because, well, it's either I'm really good at this map or the enemy team is really bad at this map. Probably the latter, because a lot of people don't know that this map is pretty much one on A1 or H6. You have to push one of those lines, and most of the enemy, or I mean most of the, uh, well you see a lot of camping on this map. 
And while it's good to have a couple people camping to keep people from rushing, you really shouldn't have a lot of people camping at, you know, that each ridge line on either side. If you just look at my cursor, well, I don't know if you can see it or not. They're doing a slight rush down to H6, but wow, they're actually pushing with a, quite a bit of their tanks. That could be the KV. Luckily, they don't have any a lot of big heavies on their side, and we've got lots of PZ4s, and they have Shermans, and the PZ4 is just a way better tank. Um, better gun, better armor. Not The mobility is a little less, but everything else is much better. So as a top tier, I'm definitely going to A1 to push, or at least defend against a, a push. But I, I can't really lead the charge because this tank is just not that great. So... Usually I come out here and try to snipe and see if anybody's going to rush over the hill like a noob. Uh, but I don't think they're going to do that this time. So the, there's an M4 up there and a T3045. Shouldn't be too much of a hassle for us. But we will see. This is not really a great place to hang out. Oh, oh, what is this? M4 trying to do a sneaky move on us? Yeah, no problem for this gun. Nice damage on that thing. I think it's only got like 450 hit points, so it's gone. You know, the low is up there as predicted, pretty much, and he's going to get swarmed. I mean, look at all those guys, like six or seven guys up there. So this is going really well for us so far, even though it's 2-2. Two to two, uh, Three to 3-2 now in our favor. Whoa, they backed up. They should have swarmed that low. That was not... What are they doing? They're... Yeah. When you have a big push like that, and there's only a tank or two there, you need to push all the way. And I know there's TDs probably where that Wolverine is, but you still need to swarm that low and take them out. If they would have swarmed them, they could have taken them out almost right away. So instead, they decided to go around, it looks like, on B2 and 3. I should have got some damage on that tank. I don't know what went, what was happening there, because that thing has really weak armor. Looks like somebody did. Or maybe I did. I was too busy, busy watching the minimap. So it looks like... Man, I can't believe that low is still alive. And a lot of that is because they're trying to fight him from his front armor. Mediums can't fight that way. You have to push around. You have to get around, and that's kind of what I'm doing right here. And I bleed off. Oh, because it looks like we lost... Uh, H6 is gone. We're losing by three tanks at this point. It's not looking good for us. Um, there's another tank now sniping from C6. They're talking about stop spamming or something. I think this is some guy trying to troll. Like, acting like somebody's spamming when nobody is. So, 3001H goes down. The Jag 4 took him out, which, that's sad. If you get, if you're a tier 6 medium, uh, and you get taken out by a Jag 4, you're pretty bad. Because that tank, you should easily be able to beat that tank. So we lost our advantage over there at A1 because people were too hesitant. Everybody hung back and let the low take them apart, and that was really not a good idea. They should have swarmed the low, taken them out quick. They had plenty of firepower to take them out, and then work on the lower tanks, but they decided to not do it. And that's kind of why I ran from that situation, too. I kind of knew that once they didn't start swarming, that it was going to be a bad idea. I went over to the backside thinking, okay, they're going to do a backside push, but... That kind of fell through as well, and it's better to stay, stay alive at that point. Know when to get out of that fight, because you're, there's no way you're going to win it, and uh, live to fight another day. So now I'm going to kind of camp out a little bit here, and see if I can pick off some people kind of rushing over. If they think they're going to win, like here, we're down four tanks, they sometimes will start just rushing into the, the valley, and if they're going to do that, I'll definitely pick them off. Still doing the stop spamming. Now, if someone does that, you can right-click their name in chat and select ignore, and you will not hear them anymore. And that's what I recommend doing. If it's not that, it's like right-click their tanker name or something like that. It's one of those two. So the low is still at 48%, and that Jag 4, look how high he is. The Type 59 is getting picked on. I don't know why he's not moving. He's giving the low his side armor. Now, yeah... Let's see if I can get this guy out of the game for him. Nope. I missed. And that's the Jag 4's low profile right there. So, nope. Man, that would have been nice. Would have been nice to take one of these guys out. So he's kind of hiding right here. 
because he knows somebody's shooting at him. I think maybe I can pick off this low. Probably didn't get him. I mean, I probably didn't hit him. We're down by five tanks. This is looking really bad. And, um... I couldn't get many, very many good matches with this tank, so... I can't even remember if I lived or, or if we won or lost this, but... Um... It's pretty hard to get good games in this tank, because... Just because it's it's gone so bad. It's really hard. You can't hit anybody, so it's you can't really help your team that much, so... I mean, you can scout a little bit and stuff, but... No, oh, here's a 12-ton. We should be able to... Well, I... Oh, the panther over there will get him. Why the panther sitting that far back, one of our top tanks, sitting there the whole time, camping base, is beyond me. That is really just not good. And that is part of the reason we're down five tanks. You can't have one of your top tiers just sitting back in base not doing anything. So we need to get this guy out of here. He's spotting for everybody. I mean, this is the worst possible situation we could have. And now we can't focus on the guys coming up the hill, which we've probably been able to take them out because we're chasing down this punk. So, there you go. He's out of the game. Now, the Jag 4 is almost dead. That's good. When we're Okay, he's dead now. The Panther thinks, oh, I'm going to start playing the game. Down three tanks still. It's 9 to 12. This is prob probably a sure loss, except the low is really hurt. I'm going to go try to pick him off since I'm at full health. 1,250 hit points, I should be able to take at least at least three shots from this guy and still live. Which should allow me to get... I think he had 14% when uh, he came off the hill, or when he was done fighting that Type 59. Yeah, I'm telling the Panther, let's move out. Don't just sit at the base like that. Especially since Artie knows where he is. Oh, here's a E8, Easy 8, my favorite target. Easiest tank in the world to kill really not a great tier 6 as far as I'm concerned because it's so easy to kill. doesn't matter where you shoot it, you're going to pen it. And the gun on it, while it fires fast, it doesn't have a lot of pen. I don't think it's that good. BDRG1B. Okay, this is really bad now. We're almost dead. Although there's only four tanks left, that's good. Artie could have really ruined my day there. I'm at half health. This is not looking great. <clears throat> 5% left, not good. Okay, he's dead. The Camping Panther takes him out. So, this is all me, pretty much. That guy is really not helping. I mean, he's adding damage, but he's not spotting. He's not even moving. I'm surprised he's still alive. Let's get a Cupola. Let's do Cupola on this guy. Yeah, thanks. Boom! One more shot, dude. You're dead. If I can get this guy out of the game, we might have a chance. And I can at least take one more shot from him. Panther decides to move up finally, because I think he wants to get the kill shot on this guy. I hate when people do that. He only want he all he cares about is kill shots, and that doesn't really matter in this game. So he's dead, that's good. Oh, we're getting capped. That's probably the Sherman. I can't think it would be the Artie. I'm really surprised that Panther is not dead. If I was the Artie, I would have been hitting that Panther the whole time and killing him. Because that's stupid. Sitting in one spot like that is just dumb. I mean, I don't like to talk smack about people that much, but it, how can you not talk smack? The, really what it is, is I hate being on teams with, with guys like that, just because it means even if I play really well, my chances of victory are really poor because I'm teamed up with guys who, well, it, it basically it's that they don't know what they're doing. And, and it's not even like they're not trying to learn because this game is actually pretty easy to learn. Um, if you're new, that's one thing. You know, you guys are learning. You came here to learn. You you did a search. You found these videos. You're here to learn. So that's different. That guy, I mean, he that's basic stuff. Don't camp base. I mean, that's pretty basic. Here he goes right back to base because we didn't find anybody to shoot. So he's just going to camp. I don't know. Maybe he has good luck doing this. I'm not really sure. Yeah, he says, oh, go cap their base. You take the risk. I'm just going to sit here and camp. I said, just kill him. It's just an Artie and an M4. You know, our two tanks should easily be able to take these guys out. No problem. The only thing that Artie might be able to do is one-shot me, but I'm not... I mean, I think he'd have to rack me to do that. I don't think the grill has that big of a gun. I, I think that's a grill. Or is that an M41? 
So I'm telling him, you know, keep looking. Don't just sit there and try to camp. Keep looking around. He's up there. Well, I like climbing the hill over here. Yeah, and there is a chance we could run out of time. There's only four and a half minutes left. So go up there and look for the kill. That way, if the time is running out, I can at least kill the Artie. And we can still win the game. He said he thinks I mean come with me, but I mean no. Go up there around our base and look around. Cause he's up there. So ten years later after I've climbed the hill, I'm up here ready to kill something. I'm ready to get this match over with and kill these fools, man. Big comeback. I'm kinda hoping we win this. It's still up in the air. So the Panther's finally moving out to look for this guy, which is good because we only have three minutes left. So there he is. There he is. I knew that he would be... Uh, now he's got to kill him before that Artie can get a shot off on him. So I see the Artie. He's kind of hiding behind the cover there. And I hit the cover. But I know he won't see me because they're usually oblivious. Until they get hit like that. <laughs> so now he's kind of aiming for me. Uh, I better move out. I don't want to just be a sitting duck. So he took care of the M4. I knew that would would be what he would do. I mean, a Panther against the M4, no problem. Even with the 10.5, then the M4 is probably going to die. Now the Artie's going to try to hide because, well, he's the last guy. Now, if he can get... If he can kill me, then he has time to reload for that Panther because the Panther's going to have to climb the hill. I mean, he's still got a chance to win this. It's very unlikely, but he still has a chance. So... I'm not going to take any chances except there, which somehow my crew missed by a long shot. I don't know how that happens. See, this is where my tank is just not very fast and not a great circler. It needs more acceleration. Maybe turning speed, actually, would help a lot. I think turning speed. So, there it is. Game over. Four kills. Pretty nice game there. 1,600-point um, game. They can't expect anything better with this tank. Lots of credits. Um, didn't get any medals, but... Killed four, damage three, and detected one. Great game, and I'll see you guys next time.